tithing, where did we go wrong? Are you tired of hearing pastors go on and on about sowing seed and prosperity? I am. It seems as though they spend most of their time talking about it. Then with some pastors, the message always finds its way right back to tithing. It's because you're not giving or not giving enough to their church. I'm starting to think most of these pastors are narcissists. Not only is it about them, but their wallet. What's in their wallet? Your money. Let's look at the very first offering with Cain and Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruit, fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel brought an offering, fat portions, from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you. But you must rule over it. <clears throat> now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. The word offering, it means gift, tribute, present, or sacrifice. Fat is the choicest, best part, abundance, and finest. There are a few words describing Abel's offering. Firstborn and fat. Abel gave his firstborn lambs the choicest and finest. There is no mention of Cain giving his best crops, offering his first fruits or finest crops. Possibly, in Cain's mind, he worked harder for his crop than Abel did with his sheep. I can only speculate. But God was not comparing Cain to Abel or Cain's offering to Abel's offering. Abel gave the best he had. Cain gave some of what he had but there's no descriptors offering any suggestion that he gave his best or tried his hardest. God was looking at the heart of the matter. When you give or make a gift for someone you love and respect, you give them the best thing you can to express that love. On the other hand, an obligation gift you feel that you should give, but you may not really want to. You don't care if they like it. You don't care if they even find it useful. Unfortunately, the story of Cain and Abel only lasted a few verses. What I can say is, evidently Cain didn't seem to care about giving his best to the creator of the universe 
whom he was very familiar with, being a member of the first generation of creation. There was one more mention of this account in the Bible, in Hebrews. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Now this talks about his heart, his intent. You know, our judicial, judicial system will decide if or the extent of your guilt based on your intent. If you injure or kill another person accidentally or if you did it on purpose. So did Cain give a lesser gift accidentally? Did Cain leave the first fruits at home and grab the wrong bushel basket? No. Cain consciously picked and chose the produce to give to God for his offering. This is where the prosperity sowing your seed tithing bunch get off on the wrong bus stop. Every tithe you give to the church, it's understood that you're giving this offering to God. The preachers always tell you this as well. I have heard pastors get up and spend time talking about your offering or tithe giving you the big sales pitch. Now the pastors are putting pressure on the congregation, possibly even causing guilt. Guilt is a feeling from your heart. It affects your conscience. Now the person that was planning on giving with a joyful heart of their own free will now feels guilty that they aren't giving enough or feeling obligated to give. Pastors are doing this to their congregations. Sure, they may give a lot of money, but it's all for naught because their heart wasn't in it. They gave under obligation and guilt. Pastors are turning people into Cain Thankfully, they're not out hurting or killing each other over who gave the biggest offering. Here's another story about offerings, Ananias and Sapphira. Nor was there a destitute or needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses proceeded to sell them, and one by one, they bought, brought the amount received from the sales and laid it at the feet of apostles. Then distribution was made according as anyone had need. Now Joseph, a Levite and native of Cy Cyprus, who was surnamed Barnabas by the apostles, which interpreted means son of encouragement, sold a field which belonged to him and brought the sum of money and laid it at the feet of the apostles. But a certain man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and his wife's knowledge and the connivus he kept back and wrongfully appropriated some of the proceeds bringing only part and putting it at the feet of the apostles. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart that you should lie and attempt to deceive the Holy Spirit and should withdraw secretly and appropriate to your own 
use part of the piece of the sale of the land. As long as it remained unsold, was it not still your own? And after it was sold, was not the money at your disposal and under your control? Why then is it that you have proposed and purposed in your heart to do this thing? You have not simply lied to men, but to God. Upon hearing these words, Ananias fell and died, and great dread and terror took possession of all who heard it. And the young man arose and wrapped up the body and carried it out and buried it. Now after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not having learned of what happened. And Peter said to her, Tell me, did you sell the land for so much? Yes, she said, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How could you two have agreed and conspired together to try to deceive the Holy Spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. And instantly she fell at his feet and died. And the young man entered, found her dead, and carried her out, and buried her beside her husband. Again, God gets a bad rap for this. It's not the fact that they kept some of their own money but that they allowed others to think they had donated the whole sum of money when they gave a portion. That's where the lie happened. They wanted glory for something they didn't do. They wanted everyone to see how selfless and generous they were by selling their land and giving the full amount as an offering or tithe. No one asked or required them to sell their land and donate the money for sale to the church. That's why I backtracked to chapter 4 explaining why others were doing it. Again we go back to intent and their heart. At the time of giving and this time deception is involved. back to the prosperity gang. They make a big display about how much people are giving. God is no respecter of persons, meaning rich or poor. It's all about what's going on in your heart at the time you give. If you give to impress others, like Ananias and Sapphira, you just wasted your money the only reason you gave was to impress men. God, on the other hand, is not impressed. If this happened today, we'd see an entire churches fall over dead, including their pastors. Why have I decided to tackle this topic? I'm so weary of hearing the so-called men of God putting such emphasis on money. Your money and what you should do with it. They also emphasize the sowing of seed. You give so much and you get it back tenfold. That's not giving for the right reasons. Give to get. I always thought a gift is supposed to be given, not expecting anything in return. Giving to be blessed. Giving not to be blessed, but giving to show respect and love to God. Preachers are teaching a trade-off. They're selling blessings. Since when is the creator of the universe for sale? 
Or is this a bribe? So why doesn't God just sell tickets to heaven, like tickets to an amusement park? If you pay enough of your money, you'll get in. Sadly, there are those who I think really believe that. Let me resolve this right now. God is not for sale. Neither is admittance to heaven. Here is what preachers should be doing. No wonder so many of them don't agree with the Apostle Paul. He's not begging for their money. Fact is, he helped make tents while ministering to a church. He rolled up his sleeves and pitched in to help. He didn't come in in a $3,000 Italian suit, stand on the sidewalk hoping not to get his beautiful, expensive clothes dirty. And this is Paul to the Church of Corinthians. Now, for the third time, I am ready to come to visit you, and I will not burden you financially, for it is not your money that I want, but you. For children are not duty-bound to lay up store for their parents, <clears throat> but parents for their children. How did the church get so off track? Thank you.